time once again for Uncle Matt's Bedtime Story. Hello everybody, it's Uncle Matt, and I'm here to read you another bedtime story. Happy Chinese New Year. It's Chinese New Year week 2022 here at Uncle Matt's Bedtime Story. Chinese New Year is also known as Lunar New Year, and this year it is Year of the Tiger. I'm not a tiger, I'm a rabbit. That's my uh, Chinese New Year animal, I guess, my birth animal. I wonder what yours is. Well, tonight we're going to read a story from a collection of stories, but the only story we'll read from here is called The Land of the Dragon King by Jillian McClure, and this story was copyright in 2008. Are you ready? Here we go. The Land of the Dragon King. Shim Chong lived with her father by the sea. Her mother had died, and her father, who was blind, was unable to work, and was forced to take his little daughter out begging. When she grew older, Shim Chong worked as a maid. Each day, she left home early in the morning and came back at dusk. One day she was late coming home. Her father set off to meet her, but as he followed the dark path along the river bank, he stumbled and fell into the water. He would have drowned, but a monk heard his cries and pulled him out. Seeing that the old man was blind, the monk said, Your sight can be restored, but only if you send 300 sacks of rice to the temple as an offering to Buddha. Three hundred sacks of rice, exclaimed the old man. I don't even have three bowls of rice. It must be three hundred, said the monk. So Shim Chong's father promised to deliver the rice to the temple. When he reached home, his daughter was back and he told her what had happened. How, he asked, can I pay for three hundred sacks of rice? Shim Chong prayed that they would find a way. A few days later, a merchant ship carrying a cargo of rice hmm, anchored in the harbor. The ship had been driven off course by a terrible, oh, driven off course by the terrible power of the Dragon King who lived beneath the East Sea. Now the ship's crew were looking for a girl to sacrifice to the Dragon King so that he would grant them safe passage to China. When Shim Chong learnt that they would pay the girl handsomely, she ran to the sailors and offered herself. You will have to jump overboard into the sea, the sailors told her. Shim Chong nodded. Then name your price. Three hundred sacks of rice, said Shim Chong. The sailors agreed. We will come for you in three days, they said. We sail with the tide at full moon. But even after the sacks of rice had been delivered to the temple, still Shim Chong's father could not see. And when Shim Chong told him that she had sold herself as a sacrifice to the dragon king, he wept. Now I am blind, and I have lost my beautiful daughter. Seas were calm when the merchant ship set sail with Shim Chong on board. Then a storm struck. The wind roared, the seas swelled, waves crashed over the boat. The dragon king is angry, cried the sailors. We must sacrifice the girl to calm him. They led Shim Chong to the edge of the boat. She stood for a moment, staring at the wild seas. Then she closed her eyes said a prayer for her father, and jumped overboard. Instantly the storm died and the seas grew calm. The sailors stared sadly at the place where Shim Chong had disappeared. 
Then they sailed on their way. Beneath the sea, a shoal, a shoal of fish swept Shim Chong up, carried her down to the land of the Dragon King, and laid her at his feet. The Dragon King stood, looking down at Shim Chong. I will make this beautiful girl a princess, he said. And when Shim Chong opened her eyes, she saw the Dragon's King Palace and heard around her the music and laughter of his underwater kingdom. The king's family dressed her in fine clothes and welcomed her into their midst. But Shim Chong was not happy. Every day she thought of her father, knowing he would become a beggar again without her to support him. Seeing how much Shim Chong loved her father, the Dragon King knew she would never be happy underwater. So, he freed her, floating her back up to the world of men inside a large lotus flower. Some fishermen spotted the lotus flower bobbing on the waves. They plucked it from the water and presented it to their ruler. As the king gazed in wonder at the strange flower, its petals began to unfurl and out stepped Shim Chong. The moment he saw her, the king fell in love with her and plans were made for their marriage. Shim Chong was happy, but still she longed to see her father. One day she asked the king if he would invite all the blind people in the kingdom to their wedding feast. Hmm. The king was puzzled by her strange request, but he agreed and set out a, and sent out a proclamation. For days, blind men and women flocked to the palace from all around, and every day Shim Chong searched among them for her father, but could not find him. Then on the very last day of the feast, Shim Chong saw a familiar figure shuffle through the palace gates. All heads turned as the queen ran and threw her arms around the ragged old beggar. Father, she cried. Is that my daughter's voice? asked the beggar. I thought she was dead. Astonished, he opened his eyes wide and found that he could see. And what was the first thing he saw? His beautiful daughter, Shim Chong. The king warmly welcomed his new father-in-law, and everyone rejoiced that Shim Chong's devotion had finally been rewarded. Wow. That was quite a tale. Very happy for Shim Chong and the father and the whole kingdom. They're all happy. That was a pretty amazing story. Well, all this week we're going to be reading stories about Chinese New Year or the Lunar New Year. I hope you enjoy that story and hope you enjoy these stories. We'll have more of them. And that's all the time we have for Uncle Matt's bedtime story. I hope you enjoyed that story, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.